giving a talk. Uh, this talk I gave in Thailand back in January is called Why Were We Born? Isn't that interesting? You ever answer that question? <laughs> it's the same question as what's the purpose of life? Uh, and what's the aim of life and so on? What's the goal? So where did we come from? That's an idea. How did we get here? So uh, Einstein also view on life as follows. Our situation on Earth, on this Earth, seems strange. Every one of us appears here involuntarily and uninvited for a short stay without uh, no known uh, purpose, um, without knowing why. And then, uh, to me, this is enough uh, to wonder uh, at the secret, you know, why we were born here, okay? So His Holiness Dalai Lama talk about purpose of life as well. Very simple. The purpose of life is to be happy and to be fulfilled. So, we want to be born to be happy, right? But life is not always paved with a rose petal. Sometimes it can be dangerous. You slip on it <laughs> with a rose petal or roses. Now, human beings take a very long time to grow and learn as you probably do. Probably uh, at least 15, 20 years before you be independent. And as, as it turns out, it's because human brain continues to develop even after 10 years after you're born. It still continues to grow. The fissure is not completely closed. The brain keeps growing. Unlike a Neanderthal, the skull is enclosed and couldn't expand. So the brain has capabi limited capability and like human being. So we learn to become a professional, be skillful, and learn how to survive, to live on one's life. But on the path, we also generate, create ego on the path. You become too crowded. You want to be independent, you know, with your ego. So why were we born? What's the purpose? Where were we come from? Where were we from? That's the past, and what would it be in the future? You ever think of that? You know, when I was young, five years old or so, I would stand outside the window and look in the sky and think, where did I come from? I know life didn't start here, for me, at least. <laughs> I don't know if you guys would think of that or not. So, some people come up with a smile and say, the purpose of life is to live with purpose. <laughs> it's so blunt but so true, isn't it? So, what would be the direction? Until <laughs> some people are born to be a star or a comedian, like Mr. Bean, <laughs> right? Are you destined to do that? <laughs> Susan Boy almost didn't become famous. She was kind of a little bit slow. So she worked in nursing home, so I'm gonna take care of her mom until she passed away. But she promised her mom, I'll be somebody someday. And once she enrolled in the British Got Talent, she became the second, probably most famous than the first one. <laughs> so, but in real life, you, you could become nobody the whole life. But in fact, Buddhism trained you to be nobody. <laughs> to be the most honorary among all ordinaries. To get rid of your ego. But society teaches you to be somebody by your ego. So the goal of life is you have fame. <laughs> and then what? Wealth or fortune. <laughs> the goal of life is to live wealthy. A wealthy life, fortune. So, but you have to learn how to be, to earn your money. So the power of knowledge, again, uh, to be a profession, a professional career, that's why you went to college, 
try to earn some degree and so on. That's a tool to earn income. That make a difference, you know, like you can be high at a higher salary level. So a professional career can give you job security, advancement, position, honor and fame, money and wealth, security, good family, success in life. Well, so what measures success in life? Some people are born bossing around or be a devil. Like uh, they have a story like this. You born to be a racist? I don't think so. I think environment shaped you. You born to be a Hitler? <laughs> I don't think so neither. So, <laughs> to start a war. But for, for real, everyone, to be born is suffering. That's the first noble truth. This is what the Buddha said. Oh monks, he asked, what is suffering? And then he gave answer himself. To be born is suffering. To age is suffering. To die is suffering. Sorrow, lamentation, despair are suffering. Physical and mental ailment are suffering. But what doesn't want, one doesn't want is suffering. Depart from loved ones is suffering. Do not get what you want is also suffering. Isn't it true? And then he come up with this. In short, the five aggregates of clinging are suffering. What are these five aggregates? Their body, feeling, perception, thought formation, consciousness. That you uh, think of it, cling to it as self. You embed the concept of self into it. The five aggregates, this five part of the person, the body, consciousness, the mind. The feeling, perception, thought formation, and mental activities. The mind is formless, but yet it travels far, solitary, incorporeal, travel far by thoughts or feeling, they hurt my feeling. Where's your feeling? This imagination that you, you generate on the self-concept. Okay, perception, thought formation. These are mental activities. So, sometimes they're born with birth defect. The Buddha stated that to a person. Listen, young man, all living beings are the owners of their karma heir to their karma, born of their karma, related through their karma, live dependently on their karma. Whatever they do, for good or for evil, to that will they fall heir. Karma differentiate people as good or bad, depends on their karma. Karma simply means action. In fact, the Buddha said, volition is karma. We're going to. This is the Hindu view accumulated cow or des and destiny. Like uh, you're born with certain destiny, that's the Hindu or the old Brahma uh, tradition, say, you've been fixed. That's, that's 